Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. The other day I just finished up a cave modeling tutorial for Hexagon and Alanis, one of the forum members, asked the question regarding the tutorial, which tool would I recommend from Hexagon to make it like a spiraling downward cave, for example, to bend the cave cylinder in a spiral fashion without stretching or affecting badly the actual inside of the diameter of the cave. Well, much like in my first tutorial, start off with a cylinder, default settings all the same. If you want to have a spiral effect, the tool to use is uh, under the Utilities tab and you'll um, come to the Taper tool, click on it, come down to the, uh, I think this is called uh, Spiral Deformer Twister, and you want to use this tool along the x-axis so I will select that icon there and if you have just a cylinder itself and you add a couple twists to it let's validate that let's click off of it you really don't see that it is twisting it looks like uh, just some octagonal geometry in which you're looking through it doesn't really look like a spiral. So even if we increase the resolution of the object, it still doesn't look like a spiral. So let's undo this. Come back to my original cylinder. I'm going to come up here, add one level of smoothing of it, click on my lightning bolt to commit that, and I'm going to come up here to select edges right click use Vance selection and I'm going to choose select one over in I found the best way to achieve a spiraling look is you've got to have some sort of deformation on your object to begin with so I'm just gonna choose a random looking uh, a random appearance in my edges here and that looks good I will hit validate and I'm just going to stretch that out sideways and stretch it out vertically. Okay, now I will come up and use my twisting tool again on the x-axis and I'm just going to rotate it 360 degrees. Let's validate that. Let's click off and you see that we're getting some twisting action going on. Let's increase the smoothness of this. And now you can see there is uh, definitely a, a twist to that. A definitely uh, a visible twist. So, let's undo all of our work so far. I think I'm going to come back and I'm going to select a few more edges. Let's see what does that look like? something where I have a pretty even distribution. That looks good. Okay, I'll validate that. Stretch it up. Oops. And stretch it sideways. Okay, I like that. I'll add a level of smoothing to that. And let's add a twist. 360 degrees validate that and let's click off of it and there we are we, we're adding a nice bend or a nice uh, twist to it I think it would be more convincing however let's undo this again I think it would be more convincing if we started off with adding a little deformation to our object before we do anything else. Let's bring that down a little bit. Bring that 
that up and down. Add one level of smoothing. Commit to that and with edges selected one over in Twelve. Twelve looks pretty good. Validate that. Now let's stretch these up and then stretch them out. Come to our twisting tool. Let's rotate this 360 degrees again along the x-axis. Validate that. Add another level of smoothing and let's see what we've got when we click off. There we go. Look at that. Now that is much better. You've got to add those bends in the cylinder first before you do anything else because that really enhances the effect. So I'm going to undo this last level of smoothing. What I want to do now is address his second question. And Alan is, Al Alanis is asking, I wanted to add a cave at the end once the spiral adds the uh, after the spiral and add an extension like a dome like a wide open area looking cave to make a housing or a hut and he asks how would he do that so the reason why I, w I, I want to add the twist first is because we're gonna have to add a lot of smoothing to this and we're gonna increase our polygon count and so rather than have the tube with the twist in it already at a high polygon count and then have to add more that really would be well a waste of resources so that's why I wanted to back up and have it at this stage and now what I want to do is close off that end and I want to select faces select that face use my sweep surface tool and I just want to come straight out and I'm just going to add a bunch of sections to this select that end and I'm going to hold down shift and select all of those and I want to stretch them out sideways stretch them up vertically select that end there and I'm just going to use my sweep surface tool and I'm just going to round out the back of it like that. There we are. Select the back. Use my soft selection tool. And just play around with adding a crude rough shape to this. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now what I want to do is add some smoothing to this. Commit that level of smoothing. There we are. Now I'm going to use my, well, we'll use displacement. We'll use our displacement brush. And I do like the one that's called waves. So let me increase the size of my brush a bit and we're not getting much of an effect and the reason why is because we don't have enough geometry on our object so let me increase the smoothing of it by one level and now we should start seeing a much better effect with our displacement brush Let me click off of that. There we are. And displacement brush. There we are. There we are. Now we're getting somewhere. So by the time we're done with this here, we should have a twisting looking corridor leading right up into our cave.
Actually, it almost looks like a sperm. Okay, you get the idea. I'm not going to continue on with the uh, displacement brush, but I will validate that. And what do you want to? What are you going to do if you want to get inside of here and do increase your smoothing and add some more personal details to it? Well, the easiest way is to select the end there, loop that, hold down Shift and the plus key, whoops, let me uh, hit F to turn that selection to faces. And I'm just going to run it up until I have a selection like that. Now I'm just going to hide the selection by clicking on that icon. And now I can see inside my object there. So now if I want to add any details to it, I'm not uh, obstructed by the long tunnel. So let's re-enable the view of every, everything. <clears throat> Add one level of smoothing. See, we're up at 25,856 polygons already. And let's take a look inside. We're definitely, we've definitely got that twirling action. If you want more, you can always add more twirls. And um, ooh, lots of good detail inside there. Let's have a look further on in. Journey with me to the center of the universe. Go away. Okay. Lots of good detail inside, and we've definitely got that twisting action at the uh, in the entrance of the cave. And there is plenty of room in here to do all sorts of individual modeling that you want. Add additional details and put your cave or your little gnome's home or whatever it is that you want. So, Alanis, I hope this has answered your questions as well as questions anyone else might have regarding the same issue. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching here at Geek Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.